Yeah. yeah, welcome back to the Hustle Continues Podcast. It's the Mighty San Quinn. And I'm Wayne Hayes. And as always, we're going to bring that heat. It gives us great honor to bring one a, a, a West Coast, you know what I mean? I want to call him a legend um, in that that wave of hip hop when it was, you had to be about the type of shit you were saying. You couldn't just make the shit up out of thin air and be that person. This is not that kind of rapper. Uh, all the way from, you understand me, Watts, California. You know what I mean? We got Glasses Malone in the building. Man, straight up, I bought my hard way Deuce Mack from L.A. John from South Central. Deuce Mack, Deuce Mack, Deuce yeah. Mack playing Ham, yeah. son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man, we love that. It's crazy, though, when you were saying that, because it made me think, like, right? that's back then when you only heard about music. So you heard about music. Uh-huh. You remember it was only, like, so many things. It wasn't no way to see it, so you had to hear about it. So uh, yeah. sometimes when I hear people say legend, I'll be like crazy because I believe this with the other niggas. Mm-hmm. But I get why, because there's a lot of things said about a nigga and they just kind of be stories. Absolutely. So you can see where a status can come from. But yeah, that that was the era we came out of. You had you heard about it first. Yeah, you yeah. didn't see it. Uh-huh. Then you pop up, you're like, well, that's what that is. Then you get some shit like your Wikipedia and then you read the wrong shit up. Man, they be, I'm telling you, man, these people are crazy. They be, you know what it is? They trying to get paid by Pepsi. They feel like glasses could get paid by Pepsi. And I'm like, if Pepsi feel like they can't fuck with me because I'm a crip, then they don't deserve my business. <laughs> Come on, man. I buy Pepsi and I'm a crip, so you can't. I can't sell Pepsi for you because I'm a crip. That's crazy. Any crip drink? Pepsi. Pepsi? You want this money or not? Yeah. Come on, man. We probably the top drinkers. I mean, you know, black folks. Yeah. You know what white saying? people ain't drinking that shit. No better. Yeah. <laughs> they know that. Hey, hey, so I just want to come right to the point real quick because you're currently on a um, on a promo, promo run, right? Uh, on the West Coast. Yeah. What brings you on the run? What's the purpose? What, what you got going on? Cancel these nuts. My new album. Cancel these nuts. Cancel these nuts. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, produced by EP Urban Pope. Uh-huh. Uh, really dope brother from Watts, from a small part of Los Angeles, like me. Played on the first four or five Kanye West records, Grammy. Executive produced the game LA album, Scarface out production, Tech Nine singles. Really dope brother from around the way. Tell me his name again. Irvin Pope. Irvin Pope. Okay. okay. So got yeah. it. We made a whole project together. You mm-hmm. feel me? And it was like Like these? Yeah. But now check this out though. What how you feel yeah, me? That part though. This yeah. part though. You know what I'm yeah. Have, and it's crazy because yeah. at the cryptstore.com, right, I got the regular cassettes. Mm-hmm. So if you got to take me, I got vinyls, so if you got a vinyl, you got mm-hmm. CDs, mm-hmm. you feel me? And I got these cassette USBs. Um, EP produced the whole thing. Joey and Deuce Mac, the LA Giants, rapped on like eight or nine of the songs. And it's just a special energy and a special time for me in my career where, like, when I first met Quinn and them, I was like a professional street nigga. Like, I still hadn't really, they paid me to be a rapper, but I hadn't really gave my all to the game. Like, I hadn't thought about it. I started rapping more, but. I didn't commit to it, so 2019, I finally came into a space where I put in the work to become a professional rapper. This is the first product of that experience. Okay, okay. shit, man. Yeah, I thought you was a pro the whole time, but you still was putting on the streets, huh? Yeah, we was fucking up, man. It's still yeah. just, yeah. you know what I mean? I felt like a professional street nigga getting over it. Right, right. I mean, like, yeah. rapping. Now I'm a professional rapper that, you know what I mean, that pride himself in the street experience. Full time, full time, fucking with it. That LA Giants album, y'all really captured LA. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I listen to it. G Side yeah, yeah, Man, yeah, that shit is solid, man. That shit is solid. Uh I, I want to say that to y'all. And I definitely like that one. But on the Kim, you know, the Kim K, you know, the nigga shit oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He I shit every day. Yeah. 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 You know, we like that shit never married that bitch. Cause we all feel like that, but yeah. That's because the game been missing California so long, they don't have our wisdom and guidance. Yeah. So it's been so long and now they wife and whores up because we ain't on the scene telling them. Don't you know what I mean? Like, hey, look at this. You know how when you said, uh, when you named uh, Tupac Must Die, yeah. you went into your artistic bag, right? Yo, you, so he had to have it like a playwright. Like right. some Shakespearean funny you said shit. That, cause nobody but, get that title. But you yeah. also, did you do that on the one prior to that? Because it has a, what, did you, what was the name of the, the title of that song you just said? Oh, oh Kanye should have never married that man. Was you on the hype already right there? Nah, nah, you know what's funny? That's a whole different experience. Tupac Must Die was like hella Shakespearean. It was just okay. explaining, really to me, California street culture. If yeah. you jump any motherfucker around here, they're gonna come back and get on you. They're gonna kill, they, they're gonna kill you behind that. So I don't think that's normal around the rest of the country. 
sometimes because one man could be above the program. Yeah. You know, we go to Texas, you know, and I no pressure on, on Jay, I mean, but Jay Prince is like one of the guys. Yeah. We don't have that in California. Not at all. No man is bigger than the program. Mm -hmm. I mean, the smallest nigga who is insignificant will kill the nigga that mattered the most. Right, right, right. And that'll be it. So when I wrote that, to me, it was like educating them on really California, you know, street ethics, like in true hip hop format, but just from a very artistic way. Even when I wrote it, I felt like I handled the whole thing with care. You know what I mean? I you made did. the title Hella Shakespearean. Kanye should have never made that bitch is different. Oh, okay. We wrote this idea just fucking around. And I realized from a marketing perspective, like, Yo, people don't get what you're saying. Like, you have to put a face to it so they can be like, well, who tried this? Who, what validates Glass's point Cause that you can't turn a hole into a housewife? Uh -huh. And that's how I was like, okay, let me tell you the greatest example. And at that point, they were still married. You, you, you're telling the most, I'm going to tell you the most pop culture example that's so in your face. Right. Here, it's right there. Look, so you want to know, family? He should have never married this bitch because he should have never married a housewife. Yeah. Right, so the, the long title came from a, what's the group called a rock group? Uh, Panic at the Disco. Okay. I was looking at their first album because they had all these long ass, I know that's crazy, this is how much study I've been doing. Yeah, that's good though. They had all these long ass titles, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, when you go to Spotify, you go anywhere, all you see is the title. You don't even see the picture, it be so small. You don't even see the artist because it's so small, but the title be big. I'm like, I'm going to do like this. Long ass title, so shout out to Panic at the Disco for this. <laughs> and shout out to you too. You know, like, like you say, you're a full time rapper, so now everything you doing Everyone. is related to your rap. You full know what I mean? Yeah. Bottom, so. I pick up games from yeah. everywhere too and throw yeah. it in the motherfucker face. Yeah. Yeah. Along with that Tupac once died thing, right? In my Wikipedia, they say when I was 12 years old, I performed with Tupac, right? Yeah. I didn't perform with Tupac. We tried to jump Tupac and them up there. I heard song. that story. Yeah, yeah, I heard that story. When the OGs right. did jump on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You know, because they had a song where Richie Rich gets the. I know. Right. Rich told me the whole story. That I cried laughing. Right. We love Richie and everything yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. love. But, yeah, yeah. but, you know, it's part of our culture that we super territorial. We all trying to make sure that our respect is important. You know, you want to yeah. represent it. Don't step on our respect. So yeah. I don't think it's about bad. I, I look at that as our lives being fun. And sometimes yeah. we challenge each other. Yeah. True masculinity. So I, I enjoy it. No That's what it was. And we know that he shouldn't have, God bless his good rapping soul, man. He shouldn't have gotten no blood and crit business, man. 25, 30 years later, after it already started. And you know, he was late. He should he was a, he was a rapper. He should have stayed a rapper. He should have stayed in the room that night after he kicked the crib. He should have knew he was gonna come back to get on him. That was natural street nigga code. So, you feel me? You know what's funny is I, I fuck with it though. Mm -hmm. I feel like he was riding and popping, so he stood up with it. So I got respect for it. I, you know, obviously, I you know I would have loved to have more music from him and him breathing air and him being there for his people. But you know that's the that's that's what we do in California. You know? Yeah, yeah. You step out there. It definitely will fuck us up. And it didn't fuck the fuels of up. Some of us just survived it. He really started fucking around with the bloods down there, huh? Yeah, and they love that nigga to death. You yeah. know what I mean? Like don't 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 get it confused, just like Lil Wayne. They love Lil Wayne. You know what I mean? These people come and they see this California culture and they want to pour them. It's hella inviting. And it's a lot of brotherhood that don't get shared. So yeah. it did it didn't work out for Pac in the long run and it was sad, but at the end of the day, it's like he lived a triumphant life, you feel me? And he stood up for what if he was on it, yeah. you know what I mean? He stood up for it. So yeah. he was fucking with his son. Yeah, he was fucking with his son. And, that, and that's, why he re, that's why he rewarded like the king he is, even in death. You know what I mean? We, his legacy is as great as it is because he stood up for some G shit that was popular. Yeah, yeah. many real niggas didn't went out the same way you know what I mean? You feel me? They ain't getting no parades or streets and shit. No, so no, no. Shout out to Pac for the streets and shit. And, and one of the reasons that you hear is because uh, the Hustle Continues podcast, we about resilience. Somebody who had something going on and kept on fighting for it till the end. Never quit. Hustle Continues. You feel I me? Mean? By any means necessary. And that's what your career represents. Longevity. Uh, multiple streams of income. Uh, reinvention. Self-reinvention. And so, with that being said, and have an impact, and you got an impeccable resume, ain't no whole shit on your file. Cause ain't nobody sorry. coming through here with no whole shit on their file nah. just cause they've been rapping. Yeah, nah. you know what I'm saying? You gonna we have to deal with that. We want to that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna win a fight, but you finna have one. You have one. Ain't no running so, behind you. And so, I wanted to just quickly chronicalize how it all happened. You and Watts, right? Young Buck, 
when does music like when did you start tweaking off of it because you said I already said you didn't really get serious until the point when did you start getting serious so to, to, it started in 2001 you know I mean my little brother got out of white you know what I'm saying I didn't rap in high school you know what I mean none of that I was already out of high school selling the charm at that point PCP at that point getting to some money my little brother K Style came home from Youth Authority you know that it was yeah it was at Preston what I don't know why oh it's correct yeah. So, uh, White babies be crazy in the mother. I remember he had just came home, and my mom, this was before my mom went to prison, you know, got her 20 year sentence. She was just putting a lot of pressure on me to keep my little brother out of trouble. He came home wanting to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. So I'm paying for studio time, and we making rap songs. And um, I think I enjoyed the relief of it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. talking about all the shit we was dealing with, yeah. and the arrogance of it all, and, you know, you getting it off. We had some songs that niggas was playing in the community, you know, the Mona Parks, not just my homes from Seven Street, but the Mona Parks, the Carver Parks, the PJs, the Pominos, everybody was playing some of these songs. So it was like, damn, my little brother get back in trouble, so now he's back in the county fighting case. But I continue on doing it because it's super therapeutic. It's super therapeutic, yeah. So I'm getting it off. And um, I met Dr. Dre, you know, fast forward, I meet Dr. Dre, shout out to my little brother Pooh, I meet Dr. Dre through Pooh. And um, he hears some songs that I have, and he's like, yo, you should be doing this for a time. So I made the commitment to stop selling Sharm, you know what I mean, or selling drugs in general, and start rapping. You know, if this guy who, you know, been making hip hop records and being successful yeah. in the business, obviously I didn't know the impact of Dr. Dre even when he told me. But he was like, yo, you should be doing this for a time. So I had, I put together my first mixtape, my man Guido, it was his time. He understood records and production. So he produced my first project, White Lightning, in 2005, and everything worked out. I got my record deal that became mine in 2007 with Cash Money Records and Mac-10, Who Banging Records. And I just started putting on for the gang, putting on for the coach, making it look good, you know, telling our story, you know what I mean, with no true understanding for, you know, what hip hop was, what records was, or marketing, and I just got busy. And it paid me, you know what I mean? It changed my life. The money I was making in the streets, I was making doing this rap shit. 2011, my homeboy come home from prison, get a job. I can't give him a job because it's 250. It don't look like 200,000 when you pay taxes. It right. Went down crazy. Don't you know that? I'm looking at Lil Wayne, got 10 of his homies employed. I'm looking at Stunner Man, got 10 of his homies employed. I can't employ nobody. I'm doing something wrong. The nigga that I invested in, Head, DJ Head, made him a DJ, he started showing me about BPMs and tempo, explaining records. Right. And that set off a bomb. And 2011, all the way up to this point, it's just been me going to war with my ignorance when it comes to records, when it comes to hip hop, when it comes to marketing. Mm -hmm. So I got, I feel like I got super serious in 2011, and I went through like medical school to become a doctor of this shit. Bachelors in records, uh, masters in hip hop, uh, doctorates in marketing, you know what I'm saying? In 2019, when I released Tupac Must Die, that was my test. That was my exam to prove that I knew what I knew. Mm -hmm. and I passed that bitch with flying colors. Yeah, you was everywhere. You, you did your rounds you, from coast to coast. You ain't gonna pop in. So you said you opened up a chart to start fucking with the Rubik's Cube, but this whole industry you broke this motherfucker all the mm -hmm. way down to just a simple skeleton. Mm -hmm. And I built the body any way I want to at this point. Mm -hmm. I understand the skeleton. I understand the foundation of it all. So I can keep building and I can keep, you know, erecting buildings off the foundation as any way I want to because I give so much of a fuck about the foundation. I care about what it means. So it stopped being a dark room of grabbing at ideas. Now it's like a straight line, like, okay, this is all we gotta do. You got your lane to the right etymology of what yeah, this shit is, right. or what culture is. I know we our job is to deliver the culture. Let me get more into the etymology of culture. So every day I'm reading. We'll be driving up here. I'm playing loops from the 60s. Yesterday, driving home, we coming from SAC. I had a playlist because of 1964 hit records. Right. And I'm just jamming and rolling through. Nobody knows what the fuck I'm doing. I'm studying the whole car. Some people sleep. This nigga driving. But they don't know that I'm listening for breaks. Come on, man. I mean, I'm doing the work being. So even if we ain't talking about I'm listening for breaks. And I might tell you, man, I got some dope ass breaks. Right. Right. Side of that, I go into the room, I'm listening to Watch Profit the other day. 
Yeah, well, was probably he was like the first rapper. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah I heard about that. Song, yeah, going through some of his shit, and you just find me listening to some crazy shit because I'm getting the feel for whatever I'm doing, or I'm just taking in information. So you full time rapper, like yeah. you say, you I relate my whole life to it. Hip-hop. And niggas say something, I've even you know wrote it. Yeah, I said it the other day. Well, yeah, I heard you and I wrote it down. Yeah. You know, you might you might get some credit. You might not get no credit, I, but I'm gonna pat you on your back. Get, let me have and have a. Two misconceptions that people may have. One, I'm a troll. I ain't never troll. And that's a hard reality for people. If I say I think Dennis Rodman is better than Shaq, best believe I'm red and I can explain why I think so. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, a, if I've been saying Andre 3000 is not a top 10 rapper. Outcast is for sure the top group. Right. There's no one rapper that never put out a solo rap you know what I mean? A solo rap album, I could consider a top 10 rapper. You got to have some work. Yeah. Now you're putting out a solo album, it's a flute. And you nigga playing the flute. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get that out. He playing the flute on the whole album. Because he don't want to be classified as no motherfucking solo rapper. Right. He's scared, I think he's scared of it. It's a lot of check. You coming from Outcast, nigga, it's the greatest group ever. Yeah. You niggas have shattered every record. You niggas is God walking the earth. You know what I mean? Like, big boy in... Dre, so I always felt it was disrespectful, but the point I'm making is there's this weird space that people think because I think so much and I read so much and I say something after I back it up, they think I'm trolling. So if you ever see me on Twitter, I'm never trolling. I'm dead serious. You, you better off asking me why I think so than to just write it off like I'm tripping. All right, that's one. Give me one more. That I would ever stop being a crip or let people define me as a crip. Come on, man, because... Never. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what that would be to say? Yeah. What no other nigga say? Yeah. I'm gonna define this no different than dog define his or anybody else. It's our job to take our culture forward and show you all the things you could be. I, this I, ain't no breaks. I think my, this question right here, I say, uh, in the hip hop genre, often addresses social and cultural issues. How do you use your platform to convey important messages? That's a great point. Um, artistically, it's, it's super informative to understand why you can't wipe these horses. And I'm gonna give you ideas so you don't run down that life as a man and then you traumatically motherfucking damaged because you didn't thought you could turn the wrong type of woman into a white. Man. It could be a tell of Whitney's plug on this album, right? Where I'm explaining to you like, yeah, you heard Whitney Houston's tragic story, but what about the nigga that's selling drugs? The nigga end up in prison. Try to change his life and then his family giving him shit because they he ain't getting what he used to and don't nobody else want to change their lifestyle. That's dope. You could only be one of us to know that story. Yeah. Nigga try to change his life, open a business. See, now he ain't making the money. Family want their regular life. Where's the, all the good shit? He <laughs> go back to the regular life. Now he trapped. You right. Know, he right. Now, spending his whole life trapped and then he up in prison and it's just him. Right. You can exactly. only get that from us. That's the truth. You can only get that from you. Go from Jordan's to Team Jordan. You That's why accept. you don't want to sell dope. Yeah. This right here, you know what I mean? So Yeah, this is why you don't want to sell dope. This yeah, is why so it's a cautionary this, tale. This is how I use my platform to deliver these ideas. You can't silence free speech. It's almost to the point you could say the same thing for rap. Now, this is why you don't want to be a rapper. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. rap, you got to want it. It's, it's dangerous. Yeah. It, it don't have to be, <laughs> right? But No, it don't. One thing about street, urban culture in general, uh-huh. masculinity, you're going to be held accountable. So right. you better say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, you that's a dope up. way of looking at Mainstream, that. Mainstream, you know, you can say anything and then be, well, I didn't say it. You can't put your hands. I just said it. In our world, you say the wrong thing about Queen, Come you might fuck you up about it. You might be outside down for three days. That, that, that was a dope uh, notion how you put that together, though. So don't be, a, don't be a hip-hop artist or a rapper if you don't want to be held accountable for the shit you say. Right. Go yeah. just get you a job at the cubicle where you can talk about your boss and... Yeah. So, uh, no, no, it's a it's a safe space for you to talk about, stay in your own lane about the shit you're talking about. Say what you mean. You feel mm-hmm. me? And Stand if you say, if you say something, don't be it. Because a nigga might ask you, a nigga might pop up, hey, yeah. baby, ask me, Glass, why do you feel about the, the police using your lyrics? I mean what I say, so if they come get me, I meant it. Right. Yeah. Fuck y'all anyway. Yeah, Twice. Be. That movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> with the you've been around from this type of uh, medium, Maybe. medium right. to the current medium of digital algorithms and the whole nine. How has music 
distribution along with so two this is a two part question how has the music and the way that it gets out so we call it distribution and how has uh, the way you see artists coming in ready how, how has that changed um just because we feel the games change, we feel that way it happens, right? It, it's like basketball, it's played faster because it's still fundamentals. And what I what I try, so you say new artists like the LA Giants, I, I make sure I let them know that we have to play a fundamental game. We can't play the game that the mainstream is playing. We can't play the game of depending on streams. Mm -hmm. We can't play that, that game ain't gonna be successful it's not guaranteed to be, it's not business. That's, that's what I'm thinking, mm -hmm. because it's not business. We in a record business, right? Which is why Billy Knight is here with us, because we're in the record business, but we also in the music business. And at that point, somewhere along the line, you have to be selling music. Spotify don't sell music. Apple Music, they're not trying to sell music, right? iTunes sell music. Tidal don't sell music. YouTube don't sell music, right? This is streaming out there. Right. We have to sell our music. Yeah, that's real as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, you focus on your form, cuz that get your elbow under the shot, cuz mm -hmm. spread your motherfucking hands and release. You know what I mean? But wow. fundamentals. So tangible too. Even now, yeah, even yeah. now, I just stay fundamentally sound. So even when I look at the new game, whatever we call it, the new game, it's not just stay fundamentally sound, execute things fundamentally, you'll be just fine. You can do good business. I agree. Um, Having a, a tangible form, tangible form. Of, of material that when the transaction is complete and you're probably going to get, you know, five times or ten times what you would normally get. Yeah. The thought process is that the market don't exist no more. And that's a lot. But the market do exist. You just have to Make serve it, it like they deserve it. Shout, out, shout out to Will that used to work at S. You feel me? Shout because, out to Will. Because just, so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna shout out to Will, right? Yeah, yeah. So Will, when I first was putting out Cancel These Nuts, we was finishing it up. I was like, I was telling Will, he was like, man, I love what you did with the record. I said, yeah, man, it's like all the joysticks is out. No, ain't no, ain't nothing plugged in the system no more. Now I'm playing the joystick. I'm moving the character how I want, any direction. I'm, I'm not limited to wherever the joystick said go. He said, what you gonna do about the CDs? I said, I'm gonna do 300 limited edition. He said, why? I said, well, hey. niggas ain't buying music no more. He said, who told you that? I said, well, I don't buy music no more. He said, yeah, that's different. And he, you know, planted the seed in my mind to make sure I remember that everybody is not in the future like California or New York. It's for real. You know, we ain't, we don't live a real life because our life is <laughs> shit. We <laughs> next life. We, 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 for the, the, the rest of the world, the real world is they, everybody ain't got new cars. Niggas still got CD players. Uh, you still got you still got AOLs and Yahoo emails. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. he he planted a seed in my mind to make me remember, you know what I mean? Like, yo, I cannot let this business tell me how to do business. Mm -hmm. Like I got it, don't get me wrong, I have to make adjustments for the business that's in place, but it cannot dictate to me how I do business. And that's where he really helped me a lot and it changed. What's happening with Cancel These Nuts? It's been out not even two months, you know what I mean? We still over, we, we just had two million streams on Spotify for the while, but we also removed almost a thousand pieces. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At $25. I seen them compare your album, they said, what's the best album of the year? You or Drake? That wasn't even close. That was big though, when yeah, I you seen the comparison. I mean, just for them to- Yeah, no, yeah. no, and the, and the reality is shout out to Drake because every one of his albums up until this point been better than my album. Yeah. This the first time it's not. It's not. Yeah. You know I mean? like yeah. It's, and it's not. He makes make dollars. Better. And kids can enjoy that. Right. This right here, bro, is home. This in and out. Right. This right here is that real. This nigga frying this burger. Right. Ain't right. no machines. Cause ain't no <laughs> <come out of, laughs> freezer. Yeah. We cut these fries yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh fries. That meat up. Uh -huh. Milkshake. There's ice cream in this milkshake. So I, I'm proud at this point. You know, shout out to uh, my homeboys at, at Ace Boys Worldwide, the community back on Fig, the whole LA Black Media Circuit. Yeah. Um, even on that conversation. And I think they were surprised, but there's not somebody in this country that can listen to this. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, people, kids love McDonald's. Man, the first time you get your kid in and out, that yeah. McDonald's shit change. That's a real burger. <laughs> you need to hold up. 
Right. Maybe like, hold up, I'm nine, 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 five, tell me for that double double. Yeah, that's that's what we focused on. We fresh burgers, feel me? Fresh lettuce, fresh tomatoes, good bread. You know, we chopped chilies. We cut the potatoes up. Frame. None of this shit frozen. Cause them shit is, is macro produced for a whole population. So he yeah. gotta make it faster. He gotta make it. He gotta worry about what they all think. Mm -hmm. Low, cause I just fry this motherfucker. You want a real burger cup? Pop up. Yeah, and that's yeah. where we at. It's, it's comparing McDonald's to In and Out. Come get this glasses yeah. burger, man. Yeah, we fresh up. Shout out to Chill Burgers and Burger. Come, come on, man. This what's, shit. What, what's the single that y'all push? The low. The low. The low. Yeah, the low is, is exactly what you know. What I mean, hip hop needs right now. The world needs, they forgot how to party, dog. Remember yeah, when we yeah. first came here? Quite first yeah. day, Queen Quill was off the porch, they was popping, I came up here. We did some event, and niggas used to party and have fun. You know what I mean? Niggas would dance and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You go to a party and niggas having a good time. Yeah. Niggas forgot how to do that. Yeah, you're right. Niggas get into a function. These young niggas stand around with each other. On the phone. On the phone. Everybody here. Right, everybody talking about they having a good time. Come on, uh, hey, head down. So I had to go I, in my. I had to slide that one. <laughs> I had to go to my MC Hammer playbook, uh, you know what I mean, and, and get on. some BPMs, and uh, look at BPM. how they start moving the party, yeah. uh, and get into that area of how 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 the legends used to move the party, and inject that into today. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I had them niggas cookbook. So. That's a good game. It's how BPM. It's man. how them niggas cookbook, man. Uh, I, I think that uh, I was impressed when I seen the merch because um, a lot of artists don't understand that. Along the sales journey, there's music at the end, or there's music at the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the catapult. You know, you got to get off the cliff and mm -hmm. feel me. The music is supposed to catapult your ass to the bag. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out Royal Retro, Royal King Retro, of yeah, Throwback yeah, Jersey. Yeah, yeah, look, oh. Check it out, man. That's our sponsor. You know, we we still forty nine are thankful to a candlestick and all. We that. need, tell them we need that. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, we got a lot of glasses in. And yeah. shout out our good uh, family over cookies. at Cookies as well. We got phone in the room. But yeah. I said all that to say, I said all that to say, at the beginning of your music, because music is a is a great platform to you to get to another space of monetization and earning and. To miss out on a tangible uh, article like this, or a shirt, a thirty-dollar shirt, a twenty-five-dollar piece, a hat, um, something else that's associated with your brand that isn't music is the play. Don't don't play with the game. In terms of it's big, did you did you think that? Did you patent that? Or no? Is shout it? out to my nigga GI Joe recipe from Six Show. Cuz did yeah. this first. Yeah. I mean, and I got one of his. Mm -hmm. and, um, I got mine after, but I went through the extras and printed on it and shit. Absolutely. And, um, made it the whole full cassette experience, but G.I. Joe from 6 the first nigga I seen with that. You can yeah, you can grab those uh, white label and mm -hmm. do your thing. Same like a reproduction I mean, you process. You definitely gonna get some queen like this. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. What's up with that next black queen? What are you doing? Man, you back on the block? I'm back in. I got a new one called back on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta we, we, we gotta get y'all on there, man. Oh, yeah, don't play. Yep, yeah, I ain't gonna play. play. We can't do no short talk. talk. You heard me, Wayne? Yes, we yes, got some glasses and Nelly Johnson on there. I gotta, I gotta shout out uh, one of the best doing it, you know what I'm saying? I gotta shout out my guy behind the scenes, DJ Billy Knight and the One Umbrella family. Yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. Oh, Bill. Oh, yeah. Move, shout bro. out. Bill, yeah. Bill, Bill, Bill is still something that was important to me. And he was like, Glasses, you the only nigga working. Uh huh. Because niggas is not, not working. working. They yeah. think everybody on the computer. Like, Hold up, we on the net. And mm -hmm. it's like, you, you can't see these type of situations. They don't pop up as simple. Like a nigga who might see this, the hustle continues, and see a nigga with Queen, they may don't know me and Cub relationship, how long we been. Go back like a hot bowl of grits. But it all starts shit. to combine, and it all starts to make sense. And sometimes you just got to be, you, you, you sacrifice and paying your dues to the game. And that's, to me, how I look at it. Like, right. I ain't worried about if I leave this, am I going to sell, blah, blah, blah. I'm mm -hmm. worried about making sure this is what it's about. Right. This is the work. So. Yeah, camaraderie yeah. and keeping it lined in. Keeping and this is being in the man. man. Yeah. And your shit is, like you say, the LA Giants. Yeah. And I know your shit yeah. is real. You get the real experience of Los Angeles, California, yeah. coming from y'all. Yeah. They yeah. water down. The work EP did on this shit is just out of world. The LA Giants really blessed like eight or nine because them niggas is all over. Like, and it's a chemistry that's undeniable. 
Hold on, we gonna hold on right now. We gonna let him cut it real quick, and then we gonna come right back. We back. Welcome back to the show. I'm Wayne Hayes. I'm Sam Quinn. We still here with Glasses Malone and my main man from the LA Giants. What's up with it, man? Deuce Mac. Deuce Mac. Deuce Mac. 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 For sure. Yeah, man. Please, hey, please meet you, though, bro. Okay, man. That, that LA Giants. That LA Giants. Minute, man. Man, thank you, man. I'll be here. I'll, I hear y'all like me down there a little bit, man. Yeah. So, you know? so, hold on. It, it, the LA Giants is a group? Yeah, it's me and my brother. Joey yeah, West. here. I'm like Joey West. Okay, Joey Westside. Yeah. They on the song with glasses on that. On they that on like eight of the cuts. They on yeah. Kanye should have never made that. They on the first song. Cast oh, y'all, y'all the y'all the next niggas. Y'all the next. Yeah. Y'all right up to back. Yeah. Y'all the bullpen. They the only thing. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool. He rapped the first voice you hear on the album is Cuz. You know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. All right. Well, well, how does it? How long you been doing it? And well, I've been doing this shit for a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. My pops and shit. So my pops play around. So that's how oh, yeah, 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 the whole time. So we we just been like he told me that. See, yeah. that's that OG shit. Motherfucker, me now forgot something 15 yeah. minutes ago. Shout out to yeah. Player Ham, man. Big shout out to Player Ham, man. Yeah. Pinnacle oh, Players Quick. He was with uh, Quick, right? Yeah. Yeah. They started yeah. Quick. They started yeah. Quick. There you go. Sugar Free, Sugar yeah. Free, too. Yeah. 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 You know, you know the rappers gotta keep some game around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Hey, but alone the new niggas used to be popping that P shit, too. You know what I You know what I mean? You know it when we hear it. That one video, the niggas is on the blade. Then when it's uh, is it Black Superman? No, no, no. Butter Law. Yeah, yeah Butter Law. Butter Law. Wow. They were so beat. They were on the blade. Yeah, they were yeah. uh, promoter. And they from the bottom. They from the East Side too. They from the East Side LA too. I, I What's his name? Like Cole One Eighty Seven. Cole with Lay Law. Lay Law. Lay Law. Oh, yeah. The guys, man. Oh, is that right? Yeah. They come up on the up on the Speedy E. Yeah. All them niggas is real niggas. That's the funny shit. Them, the world. Man, they all them niggas is all yeah, dope dealer ass. For real. Dope dealer ass street niggas. Yeah. They That's don't really get enough credit because this the authentic and it's a genuine article. And shout out to Lake They coined the term G Funk too. They, they, uh, they coined the phone G Funk. Yeah, they yeah, sure did. They yeah, made that's that some up. street yeah, niggas right there. Right, yeah. Right. Cool niggas. And he was behind a lot of that easy all, all that music in, not just Dr. Dre, it was no, it was it was no. like seven and two, right? Trip Lay low. Right here, right all the, but trick this. Snoop was gonna be on above with above the law until they came Dre got him last. But he he had a deal in place. Him and Warren was over there with Above the Law. What? And just told that story. Snoop was talking about it. they was on the verge of signing above the law. A uh, Hutch was gonna do his album. They just Snoop just talked about it and it fucked me up because I, I talked to him with more about it in detail. But yeah, he was gonna sign to a butter law and Warren played. Warren tried to give Snoop, I mean Dre Snoop's demo a couple times and Snoop Dre just wasn't in the mood or he wasn't fucking with whatever was going on. And so they was going to do a deal with Laylaw, excuse me, with, with Hutch and then right with Butter Law and. You know, they was gonna produce their whole album and they go to a party one more time and Warren puts on the music and uh, everybody in the party is dancing to the music. And Dre asked Warren, like, who was that? He's like, that's Snoop. I and gave it to you a thousand times. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> now Snoop is with Dr. Dre and Death Row and not a blood law. That fast. That's crazy. That fast. So that means it's your family playing. Y'all are a part of the, the, the thick of this rap shit. In California. Uh, on the West Coast. Yeah. First yeah, DNA. Right, yeah. yeah. My Royce. pops and Quinn yeah. and all in that whole little crew. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. And yeah. you know the kids always be on steroids, so Battle I know your game is even thicker, you feel me? Yeah. Battle K yeah. was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jelly Roll was there. Oh, uh, Jelly Roll, my nigga. What's up, yeah. Jelly Roll? Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah. 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 So do you consider this, uh, this moment to be a time that you're excited about in terms of what you're doing with your music? And, a, and within your music, is there anything innovative? Because when at this time, you can have some music, but you got to goddamn have some some sauce and some other pizzazz that, that get their ass out of nowhere. Shit, my shit, my shit harder than theirs. Yeah, we yeah, got this. Is good place. Hey, that's a good place. I ain't doing no slick. No, 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 I ain't doing no silly shit. Uh, yeah. I ain't trying to be like be something, yeah. but just to get a click or like. Yeah, yeah we got no nails. I ain't. <laughs> I ain't really doing no sucking shit at all. Man, yeah, sure. we love it. Not listening to it neither. Right, right. So I don't even know what the fuck be going on half the time. <laughs> yeah, I definitely ain't doing that. Bro ain't doing it. So a nigga just really just doing him, bro. Hey, I guess at the end of the day, what I nigga take it serious though. You gonna be caught out of character? No hell, no. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm no. with that shit too. Yeah, be 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 you and talk about what it is. 
And so, so at the end of the day, I, I think really what I'm saying is, what do we give the people to accompany the music? They need something else. As a they call that shit content. As a marketing person, that's yeah. why they got me. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So like, the the there we go. There we but, go. But minus the product, we got a way we gonna fuck the game over the Giants. They got their own label, with John Light. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They they just my niggas. Like I just help them with marketing because God just lined us up at that time. And so, so trust me, when it's time for they, you know what I mean? Like right now, that's why they pretty much this might as well be they fucking ready. Really, but mm-hmm. it's like when the time come for that shit, you know what I mean? It, it's less than twelve months away. You know yeah, what I mean? Some shit that it's it's gonna be a problem from top to bottom. You know what I mean? Like yeah. even how we show it, like we ain't trying to tell niggas because niggas are trying to beat us to it. But oh, I take your word yeah. if you said that you got a, a strong hand in it because your your last few uh, tweaks Ooh, have shit. been extensive. Now, when you Motion picture that, type shit. Well, I can say this as a, as a fan. Wise. As a fan, when you listen to that like giant shit, they bring mm-hmm. that. They bring that. You gonna be like, man, that sound like an original shit. Mm-hmm. For now though, because mm-hmm. they, they living it. Like they didn't see it on a TV show. Mm-hmm. They didn't walk through this shit. Cause you can tell who walked through it. Yeah. Right. And that's you know, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing right. really. Ain't nothing better than some authentic shit. Yeah, Even if you have an authentic punk. And you can do a punk <laughs> shit, and it's real. It's real. You a punk. Yeah. 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 You know, you said yeah. some yeah. bitch ass yeah. shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that. What you yeah. expect? Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. real. Yeah. It ain't fake. That's that's what I get from it. And more than anything, like helping them just to to define. Same thing with myself. Like, I didn't have to figure it out. Like I had a lot of luck. At you know, mm-hmm. certified and haters and mm-hmm. all that shit is luck. You know what I'm saying? Like that good is real. You know, uh, with Ty Dolla Sign, that's real. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Tupac must die. That's real. This project is real. Mm-hmm. This ain't no luck. Like this is, this is hard work and dedication. So even for them, like they, they, you know, naturally are MCs. Their father is in their DNA, and then it was just like their dad started quick, and their dad started free, and they all came through the the, the, the penthouse, right? Mm-hmm. They are birthed in the penthouse. Birthed in the penthouse. Birthed in the penthouse. So it's my job. That's it. Yeah. So it's my job to make sure that. We put the sauce on the thing to make it stand out, like you saying. So it do got that marketing touch from glasses to where it's like, oh damn, only these two niggas, only Deuce Mac and Joey Westside of the LA Giants could do this. Couldn't nobody else do this. I get it now because it's already kind of it ain't nothing you got to uh, build in. This ain't no build to bear shit. No, so this made, is already made there. <laughs> right. So that so just be that. Yeah. We just, like, yeah. we just gotta go back to the form foundation. One, two, three, four, five. You know, don't get caught up at six, seven. This ain't. We don't start this from here. I mean, we start right back at the foundation. Like it, when this is said and done, it might be a four or five story house, four or five bedroom. But we not gonna start from the five story. We not gonna start from that and build up. We gonna start back again at the foundation. Mm-hmm. Build that shit all the right way. And you said you was going on tour. It was so mafia. I don't even want you to reveal how you gonna do it. But they, they you will see. Glasses along the LA Giants in a real way. Yeah. You're gonna have to come see him, but we ain't gonna man, that was I know I know good game. Yeah. Don't say it, motherfuckers is yeah. game thieves. They won't be able to do it like you, but we don't even want you fucking up playing. Because they'll walk it up. Yeah, well, we yeah, can playing. let some of you Marcavellis know that they on the radio run right now, uh going through the whole west the whole country. from the north all the way up to the we San Diego, Diego we by did Mexico. The Club. We did brilliant idiots. We did New York and Boston. So oh. we came home, right. right? We did stuff in LA. Now we up top doing home, our second home. Right. Yeah. Then we next month we go to Atlanta, oh. slide over there, do drink champs in Miami. Oh. In right. January we in England. Come on. Because this motherfucking Cribbin and Mac and desire to be in Europe. Exactly. Right, right, right. 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 Cribbin in Australia. Yeah. All the way to England to have a spot of tea or something. Yeah. You feel me? It's on that part. You know what I'm saying? With the homies that stabbing niggas for a day. We go over there with our knives posted up and the projects and angling with the homies and, you know, unite these ghettos all across the world. Big pokers over there. What I would want to ask you to ask yourself. Tell your, a younger you what to look out for in this music business. What to look out for. You know what? I wouldn't even talk about what to look out for. I would be telling myself that you don't love it. Like, you don't deserve it. You need to make a choice. You need to decide if you're going to do this or not. You can't, 
you can't take the mentality from the streets into this business. And I think that was really detrimental initially. Um, I wouldn't even tell, it was nothing to look out for because the reality wasn't nobody. In what, in what way? Give up the game. Well, yeah, wasn't nobody going to try to do nothing to me at that point because everybody knew what type of person I was. They, my reputation had preceded me before I got there. But I would talk to me, period, like I would talk to me, period, about do I love this? And if I love it, I need to commit to it. Not just to making records, not just to being at the studio, but to expressing, to representing us. Mm -hmm. Not just not just myself, but us. Yes. You know what I mean, this whole movie, uh, yeah. this, uh, this, whole generation. Crib, this whole California thing, everything, and putting it on. And I would have told myself to, you know what I mean, you need to love it. You need to figure out how to fall in love with this. Earn it. That's big. But it's probably really bad because at that time I was so street man, I'd have been getting niggas shot and ignorant and shit. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I just couldn't play the same way. So yeah. I think God did it the way he had to do it. Yeah, guess what? You can't do that. It's just a fantasy. But yeah. Now, you know what I mean? So that's it's good to know. Now, yeah. so, now I'm looking like I wouldn't even get half of these niggas son of done. So I'd be looking at these niggas crazy. Like, on somewhere, boy. Yeah. I, I was re I'm reading this book right now. And it, it, it has to do with changing habits. But in a nutshell, kind of what it says is that in Which order to, it? uh, it, it's called uh, something about uh, atomic habits, right? Uh, th those two words are in it, uh, atomic. I think that's the actual uh, the name. But anyway, one of the things it says is that um, if you want to make a change, you have to become, obviously subconsciously, what it is. So so if you wanted to be successful, what do you, what what do successful people do? Like in your mind, what do they do? Motherfucker might get up early, motherfucker might uh work out, take care of himself. There's certain things you gotta do in order to get a result. To double down. You can't you can't finesse it. Even, I don't even wanna be successful. Uh -huh. Like, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. And so that question right there, I think you have to obsess to be where I want to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. And naturally, at this point, I'm obsessing. That's big. So I read about it all day. I'm on it all day. I'm told. We took KG from Naughty by Nature. Cause shout out to KG. Yeah. One yeah. of the greatest producers ever in hip hop. Never spoke of. Never. Turned around, did hip hop hits, R and B hits. Butter Love, a, a monster. I said, but Love, all that shit was stuck in my head. Right. Yeah. So it's like, like we took this nigga out. Me and my nigga Joey Westside, the EP. We was in Jersey. We went to eat with him just to pick his brains. I've been texting him, you know, just talking to him. Grateful I got to share his presence and just listening to him. You know what I mean? You obsessed with this shit. You start knowing shit about people like the single, the low. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, it was inspired by a couple different records, but I, like I knew the sound of it, and I wanted Hitman Howie T to mix it because Howie T mixed Chub Rock, yes. Treat Him Right, yes. and Color Me Bad, Sex Me Up. He produced both of them and mixed them, and I wanted him to mix them. And the fact that I knew that is because I'm obsessed because the space that I want in this culture or in this artistic expression. Only people who are obsessed get there. And this nigga right here is focused, man. I feel the energy coming out the side of him. Mm -hmm. For real. Hey, he focused, man. Yeah, that's that's what it is. He's saying being fit. He's living, breathing, waking up, this shit. Everything got to do with it. He's, he's not playing. Like, Absolutely. He's yeah, like a scientist or something. The success that she was talking about, or what do they do? Mm -hmm. People that I look where I want to be, mm -hmm. they obsess. Dr. Dre obsess over this shit. Absolutely. Kanye it's, it's obsessed it's over shit. Yeah, it's becoming obsessed. it's becoming that. Yeah, that's what you said. You feel too. Me? That's what you, you said. Double be, down on what you, you said. If you want to be good at reading, just just read. Yeah. And yeah. you'll become a reader. So it'll be like, how do you see yourself? I'm I'm a reader. I'm successful. If you want to be a reader, you gotta read. Yeah. If you want to be successful, it, you gotta fill in the blanks. What are the things that you will do? At a point, you might have been obsessing, obsessing over gang banging, so you were building the building blocks of that. What's crazy is that actually was the truth. It was and a conflict time, with the music side. It's weird to though. say that now. Yep. But even at that point, I wasn't obsessed over gang banging and music, but what it was, what music was, I always felt it wasn't for real niggas. Mm -hmm. Like, if you really came from the crime side of the streets, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. hip hop is, 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 is street urban culture, you know what I mean? And that's Disney populated crime. 
raping communities. And mm -hmm. I always felt like people who fell on the other side of crime, because you got the other people who wasn't committing crime that grew up in the same place. But if you fell on our side of crime, I felt like the gang wasn't really generous to you. It wasn't built for you. Because you're not supposed wrong. to be telling on yourself. So you're like, you're yeah. telling everything. But. Like everybody else can make like a, shout out to Rick Ross, Rose mm -hmm. and all that, but they mm -hmm. can make up an existence. They don't, they don't have to be held accountable. He can name himself after a real deep boy and yeah. talk about knowing people was impossible for him to know because yeah, he's, yeah. it's entertaining. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's a fantastic entertainer, an amazing ear, an unbelievable talent to make records and just amazing. But when you like us and we come from the shit, you like, I better not say I know, you know, I know such and such from Great Street right, that right. sell all the water. Yeah, right, you can't right. just start dropping the name because these niggas right now are getting busy. Right. Right. So we, we fight a harder battle right. on our side. But what I realized through the studies and through the work is that it was made for us. Mm -hmm. It was made for us. And we can tell extreme truths that nobody else, that, that Rick Ross wouldn't dare to tell. Shout out to Rose again. Oh, yes, he couldn't dare to tell. He couldn't dare say this. Niggas couldn't dare explain what happened to Tupac Shakur in the mm -hmm. middle of some gangbanging shit. They couldn't dare. Most, 98% of rappers that ever rap can't tell that story. But if you want to buzz, you could. You could tell that yeah. story. And know it's real. And, and had a right to say it. You know what I mean? <coughs> yeah, and had a right to say it. So they, they don't have a right to say some shit, you know, because you're a square. What the fuck you want to talk about that? You feel what I'm saying? You just heard something and you have way telling the story. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, so, right. so I feel like what we are, this hip hop as a culture was created for us to express ourselves. When the BX niggas did it, it was the spades, it was some gangs, some black people, hurting them, stick up kids, crazy little them stick up kids, they us. Mm -hmm. So it's ours to, to express what it's like for us. And once I realized that, that really got my brain out of that space that made me feel like I was cheating and realized, no, nah, them niggas did this shit for us. Dude. Because all the middle cast black people already had representation in mainstream. It was uh -huh. always a, a Willis or Eddie Winslow or Theo Huxley. Uh -huh. right. It was the ghetto that was being ignored. Or, hip -hop, or, or, or Run DMC. Yeah, but hip hop gave the ghetto a voice. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Run, DMC. Run DMC was the Will Smith. Jam Master J. Was us. It was the car. But, but if you look at them, they were a living embodiment of the street. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. So you even, even, even if Jay was the, the, the nigga that's out there playing and right, running right, right, right. a little bit more suburban, right. they still represented the corner. Right. right. Yeah, you yeah. see them yeah, in track so they look right. like D boy niggas stepping out of Queens, you know what I mean? With all Jay the Because of Jay, because of Jay right. Swag. Somebody right. saw, yeah. shout yeah. out to Jay, but they saw this is what the streets look like and they represented yeah. it. So shout out to them, brother. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Man, uh, with such a, you know, a lustrous career, a lustrous career, you know, I didn't want to even go too far back. I wanted to just, your motion right now is prevalent. Um, a few people might know you about your work most recently with the uh, Tupac Must Die. And, but you also, you know, and I want to I wanna bring, bring us from the cash money time and tell us before we kind of close, if there was anything that you could do different in your career between that time and now, one major move, what would you do? Leave my pride in the streets. Yeah. Leave my pride in the streets. I'd have left that shit on 117th Street Park in the same driveway I used to sell Sherman. And how, how would making that decision would have benefited your impact? Because by that way, there is not a producer breathing air. They, the Rick Rocks and the mm -hmm. Battle Cats mm -hmm. and the Warren G's and the Dr. Dre's and the and the DJ Quicks, they couldn't have got away from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, they, press. they could ignore me at that time in my life. They could have ignored me, and I would have took it as a slight and never talked to them. Like, whatever, fuck y'all, I'll figure it out myself. But if I would have knew what DJs mean, producer DJs mean in hip-hop, there was no chance possible they would have got away from me. Yeah. They'd have, for sure, they would have been producing for me. Right I mean, now. I would have stayed more with DJ Toon, who did certify yeah, my first, you know? my first hit record, right? Yeah. It's a gold record. I would have stayed by his side. Manny Fresh, Manny Fresh does my Manny second Fresh. single. I would have been like, no, nigga, you got to do five. Yes, uh, yes. I, mean, I would have yeah. went to the niggas who sound, 
permeate through hip hop, and I would have attached myself to them motherfucking niggas. Yeah. They could have, Rick Rock couldn't have got away out of been at this nigga house because my mm -hmm. resources is at this to where you couldn't get away from me in LA. Like, yeah. I could figure out where you at and pop up where you at. So, mm -hmm. I, if I would have left my pride at home, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and, and came into this motherfucker as a whole man and not really worried about this part of it. That's what I would tell myself. That's a good answer, bro. Uh, I come from Preston niggas too, man. What? I was up around. You got the records, nigga. Come on, Rick, 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 Rick,